Hello, how, how you guys doing? I'm making this video because the more I watch, the more I see about, you know, doctors and addiction, the more I realize doctors are just a crock sometimes. The best research out there for addiction with the best results is replacement therapy for addiction. Methadone and Suboxone. That's it. But you can't really take those anomalies into an account when you're talking about statistics. When you're talking about statistics of people quitting addiction without actually using medicine again. Me, myself, I was in the methadone clinic for three years. I came off of methadone onto Suboxone for 20 days. I'm at day seven now. No opiates. At first it was pretty easy. Now I'm having a little bit of you know, cold sweats and laziness and just boredom and depression, what they call post-acute withdrawal symptoms. Not really the throwing up and the diarrhea and the vomiting and all the stuff, you know, that's two words for vomiting, right? Okay, however, I'm feeling just fine, you know. There are still cravings, there are still thoughts, and they're going to be there. The problem is, when I see all the research out there that says addiction is a disease, but if you stop using opiates, your brain will completely repair itself within a year or two. If you believe that, well, sorry, you've got something to learn. I'm going to teach it right now, at least the best I can, at least what I believe, because, let's face it, I know just as much about the brain as the best brain scientists out there, because we don't know shit about the brain. Don't believe me? Go look it up. Like, literally, if everything we knew about the brain was compared to everything we don't know about the brain, it would be like comparing the size of a penny to the size of the earth. That's how much we don't understand about the brain. So really, the best brain scientists out there might know how to, you know, carve your skull open and take a piece of your brain out to save you from a tumor, but he doesn't understand the way the individual synapses fire messages. He doesn't understand how messages get from the brain down to the legs. I mean, he really doesn't understand it. The best we have is when someone has a stroke and all of a sudden they lose part of something, you know, they have a stroke and then they can't move their right arm and their right leg. And they scan the brain and say, well, look, the left part of the brain is not functioning, so that must mean that the left part of the brain controls the right side of the body. That's reasoning by deduction. That's not actual factual science. That's just re insanity. If you really want to know about addiction, I think you need an educated addict. Someone who's been through it, someone who may be able to beat it. Now, I'm educated in a sense that I'm an automobile technician and I know what I'm doing when it comes to automobiles. But, I think I also understand brains a little bit because, I mean, they're really similar to computers in a sense that messages have to start somewhere and terminate somewhere. Now, the difference is with our brain, when you get addicted to something, that pathway becomes very strong in the brain down to those synapses, individual ones that tell your brain to release the dopamine. I see videos and, and theories why addiction within a week you develop tolerance. In reality, in a week your brain re completely depletes its supply of dopamine. You're not needing more of the drug to get high, you're needing more of the drug to get your brain to release that little bit of dopamine that it has stored up from the last four hours that you haven't taken opiates. If you stopped using, if you used opiates for a week and that was all, and you stopped using opiates for a week, the next time you took that opiate, it would almost get you as high as the time and you, first time you took it. Because your brain will have completely resupplied itself with dopamine by that time. But when you're, you know, years and years of abuse, as in my case, five years of actual street addiction to pills, and then three years being at the methadone clinic, these pathways become strong. I mean, strong. Irreversible. The fact is, it's man-made damage. Our brain can repair itself, but it can't repair man-made damage. When we start putting opiates in our body, that pathway in our brain to release the dopamine and trigger you to get that euphoria that you feel, never goes away, ever. It's going to be there forever. And any brain scientist out there who says, no, that's not right, it will repair itself. Look at the relapse rate. 
almost, if you actually look at it over time, like if you actually did like a 50 year study, you would probably have almost 100% opiate relapse rate. Why is that? That's because that part of the brain that's addicted to opiates was man-made damage that could not be repaired. The brain could repair itself in order to function normal again, but it could not repair the damage that was done. This is why even 10 years later, 15, 20, 23 years Philip Seymour Hoffman was sober and hadn't touched no alcohol, no drugs. I mean, dude picks up a drink at a party and within months spirals out of control is injecting heroin just as much as he did 23 years ago. It's because those parts of your brain are still there, they're still open. They're just waiting for the right drug to come flowing down them again. And as soon as the right drug comes flowing down them again, it'll quickly, I mean, it'll quickly cause your body to deplete its supply of dopamine. I mean, way faster than the normal response would have been. This is why even years later, years later, you will get just as addicted and be taking just as many pills or just as much heroin or just as much alcohol as you did when you used years before. I mean, opiate addicts in general and alcohol addicts, let's say I'm an Oxycontin addict. This is how I was. I mean, literally taking four, five, six, seven, eight Oxycontin 80s a day. If I stop using, and 10 years from now, all of a sudden, I start using opiates, give me a week, and I'll be taking six, seven, eight Oxy-80s a day. Why is that? It's, it's All we can do is look at the data, in a lot of cases, and do reasoning by deduction. We know they don't know a lot about addiction, because their most successful treatments are replacement therapies, where... They give you methadone, which has a 36-hour half-life. It absorbs into the blood and then redissolves back out into the body over time to allow you to not have cravings during the day and not be sick. This is why opiate addicts who go to the methadone program are usually there forever. Or it's a, a constant cycle their whole life of in and out of the methadone program. Now, recently, in the last 10, 15 years, they've came out with buprenorphine naloxone suboxone this drug is another replacement therapy and it's administered that way by these addiction therapists that they give you this drug knowing that you're not going to be able to come off of it this is why it's so important for you if you go into these programs my best advice one, stabilize your addiction stabilize it same dose, same time, every day. Get a job, keep a job. Go there, be, be early every day. Get a routine, go home after work, take a shower, mow your lawn, do whatever you gotta do. You need to stabilize your addiction. Within a couple years, all the cravings, and you'll find all those people that you know and all those people that you would get pills from, once you're stable and you're like taking the same dose every day at the same time, you'll stop talking to those people. It'll just happen. You won't have time for them. Then, once that happens, once you've been where I was for two or three years where you're stable, and then taper off of that. You can use buprenorphine for 20 to 25 days without it becoming really habit forming. Then when you stop the buprenorphine, you're not going to have the physical symptoms as long as you stop it within 20 to 25 days and as long as you taper down off your methadone that's how I did it I was tapered down from 120 to 80 to 40 to 20 I went from 40 to 20 in the course of a week and then to nothing and then started boxing two days later day seven makes me happy makes me wish that I would have done it sooner but hey when the term of an opiate addiction, it's better now than never.